Bingo, Community Matters, 3 o'clock rock here on a given Monday. Monday is so exciting because it wakes us up after the a soporific weekend, as you will. We have a special guest today uh, here on uh, Think Tech. Let's see, what are we doing? This is Community, community Matters, right? Um, and we have Nicole Brody, who's the Executive Director of Kanu Hawaii. Kanu, a very important organization interested in public policy, interested in informing the public, a 501c3 that counts, um, talking about raising awareness, just like just like Think Tech, raising awareness. Welcome again to the show, Nicole. Thank you so much for having me. Nice to have you. Now, you have this very interesting game, and yes. we must talk about it because it you know, relates to the election. The election is only a couple of weeks away, so people ought to know about it, if at all, right now. Yes. What is it called? So, um, just a little bit, Kanu is a, a sustainability organization. We feel that civic engagement is a critical piece of sustainability. You can't be a sustainable community if people don't engage and talk with one another and aren't aware of what's happening. And so, um, we try to figure out what's the best way to engage people around the elections. And it's not enough to register voters, which we also do um, thanks to our work with the Office of Elections, but it's important to make sure that people are educated once they um, are ready and they have that ballot in their hands and they have an idea of who they want to vote for. So we have created a game um, that anonymizes responses to a survey. So basically no names, no pictures, no parties. You don't know who said what. You just have to choose, I like this answer more, I like that answer more. And at the end it will tell you which candidate you agreed with the most. Very interesting game. <coughs> and, and if I may say so, it's, um, it's uh, uh, what's the word, it's seductive. Yeah. You get in there, you, you really must know because they'll tell you things about a candidate you just, you never, you know, when you read all their rhetoric, you know, it's rhetoric, sorry, um, <laughs> but when you read their rhetoric as against their, com their competition, against their, you know, opponent, then all of a sudden it takes on a, another meaning. Right. And that's what this game does. It actually compares and yeah, it forces asking, you. Yeah, which rhetoric speaks more to you. And yeah. so um, Kanu is not taking a position on any candidates or any stance. It's really just presenting the two or three candidates or however many candidates are in your particular race um, against each other. And like you said, you just compare between them. Well, before we go into the game, because I want we got it all set up. Mm -hmm. We're going to play the game right here. We're going to play the game right here. You're going to see. You're going to really <laughs> enjoy this. But uh, how did this game get established? How did you set this up? Um, well, this actually was started in 2012 when I was not yet working with Kanu. Um, but we have some amazing tech genius in Olin Lagan who has been working with us for years and he was able to set this up. And um, I assume it was the brainchild of Olin and James together, but I'm not positive on that. Um, James Koshiba, the previous executive director. Um, that they wanted to create something that would inform people, but it was, um, rather than just creating a voter guide, they wanted it to be interactive and fun, and they found a way to sort of gamify it. And so a, a voter guide that's interactive, and you can still learn, but still have fun. Yeah. And then this year we wanted to um, make it a little more fun. We found that people are really disengaging from the process we found this year. Um, I think Disengage, it could be... Disengaging. Yeah, they're not paying attention quite as much. C can um, we dwell on that for a moment? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not an expert. I can't say that I know well, exactly why, why this is happening. Some of my theories is that um, this election season started way longer than most election seasons have in the past. Mm -hmm. I think there is so much constant noise with the presidential election that I think a lot of people are just kind of sick Had of enough. all of this. Yeah, they're just done. Election fatigue. I think they were ready for the elections months ago. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I think it's just a lot of overwhelming information on the national level. And I think it's drowning out the local scale, um, which yeah. is what this game focuses on. It's all races except presidential. Um, we really want to get back to the local issues of Hawaii. Um, but I think that, yeah, people are just kind of sick of the election stuff. And um, so, it's, so it's been it's hard to get people to engage. And so we wanted to come up with, we shortened how many questions we had, the number of questions, the, the length of the responses. Mm -hmm. We also tried to mix it up a little bit and have some questions that are a little... Um, surprising or offbeat, like we ask, what's your favorite local snack, right? So it's just a little... I want to know that about my <laughs> candidates. <laughs> so it's not necessarily like it's hugely important or like super relevant, but it's something that's fun and will hopefully be like a stepping stone back into the process to kind of lure people like, look, it's fun. Yeah. It's not the tedious you rhetoric. If you're simpatico with someone, <laughs> yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, or just like an interesting answer, you know, something surprising that's like, hey, I want to learn more about this candidate, yeah, right, you know, right, right, who knew right. that they ate raw liver poke, you know, and stuff like that, just kind of random stuff. And so, like I said, it can be sort of an entry point back into engaging, back into learning about our candidates. Just now you're through. in it with OHA. 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, what's the deal there? Um, so OHA is also very interested in having voters be educated on who the candidates are, and so they helped us come up with some questions for the state race. Mm. Um, so they worked with us. Um, there are, I believe, five short answer questions and four multiple choice questions. And so they helped us you know, come up with those questions and what those were going to be for um, the state house and state senate. Mm -hmm. And then Kanu came up with the rest of the questions for the rest of the races. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go out, you, I, I guess you write an email to a given candidate and you say, here's some questions and if you want to be included in our voting game, then answer the questions and you give them, what, word limits or something? Uh, yes. About what you want from them. Yes, yeah, speaking of which, um, if there are any candidates who have not yet responded, we are still taking responses. Ah, you so, heard that. This is yes, very important. Yes, please <laughs> search your emails for Kanu Hawaii. Um, we have sent out multiple emails in the past week to candidates with the, the link to the survey. Um, and as of the time I left my house, I've since responses have, are coming in regularly. Um, so I think another one came in before I got here. But when I left my house, we had about 68% of all candidates responding. So more than half, but we still have a ways to go. And that's been our biggest feedback point from people who've taken the game is, oh, I wish my candidate responded. So we, yeah. we really want candidates, all of them, to respond. And like I said, there's still time, so hopefully they do. They might lose if they don't respond. If, it's just, you know, yeah, like I mean, by default, they might lose. Depending on how many people play our game, that could be a risk. Yeah, if there's only one voice being heard, then, yeah, maybe people just decide but to But you originally them. set a deadline, I'm sure, on them getting back to you. Yes, right? we did. We did. But we know that this is a very busy time for them. They have a lot of candidate surveys to respond to. Um, but as we are hoping to get 25,000 voters participating with this game, we hope that, you know, they'll prioritize ours. And like I said, there's not that many questions. It's, it doesn't take that long to respond to. No. So no, hopefully I, they just I, take the, the few minutes to What's to the that. word limit on an answer? 100 words. That's all? Yeah. Okay. That means so you really have to craft your answer. Yeah, I guess it does take a little bit of time um, in that way that, you know, you have to make sure it's not too long, which is also hard, you know, to find mm -hmm. that balance. That we want to ask policy questions, but we don't want it to be too complex that they, it yeah. requires a longer answer yeah. where we say limit your very complex response to 100 words. It just isn't fair. Um, so we, it was a difficult balance This is really strike. interesting. Um, so, gee, I have so many questions about this. <laughs> uh, I do want to get to the, you know, the actual <laughs> game, but... Um, so you're covering all state offices, including OHA. Yes. You're covering federal offices, but not the presidential race. Correct. Yes. Are, are you covering? Got a lot of amendments to city, uh, you know, the city charter of Honolulu, and yeah. also the state. You're covering that. That's complicated. Huh? We are not. We are not. Um, I wasn't really sure how to do that. Plus, there were 20 in Honolulu alone, um, and so yeah. it would have just been a massive undertaking to figure out how do we gamify that. Um, and make sure that people are educated enough. Cheer up the, if you go to the League of Women Voters, which is a possible, um, you know, a partnership for you later on, I think, um, they have, they have a, a, a arguments in favor, arguments against. Oh. For all the state and city council. Yeah, and there are a lot of other voter guides out there that we encourage people to check out um, to learn about their candidates. You know, like I said, ours is just sort of this fun entry point where hopefully people will want to learn more um, and then explore those other options. So League of Women Voters is a really great place to go as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is good. I think it's a great public service that you do this. Thank you. Um, so 25,000, but I, I'd rather see 100,000. How are yeah, you going to get there? Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> well, first of all, this show, of course, is a good way to do that. Um, yeah. We encourage, as people play it, to share it. We think it's a useful resource. And so, you know, share it with your friends and family. Let them know that this game exists and that there's a way when they're staring at their ballot and they have no idea who to vote for, for, you know, their county representative or their DA, that at least there's something that provides a little bit of information. You know, in large part, the, the, the success of a candidate in a game like this is how well the candidate writes that hundred words. And some candidates have more trouble writing a hundred words than others. I mean, it, maybe they bounce against the limit or maybe they just can't write very well. But that could be, yeah. And so, I mean, we wouldn't want to penalize people for that, but I think that also plays to, um, if they understand where their weaknesses might be, then they surround themselves with people who can manage those weaknesses. And so maybe they have a staffer or someone who they trust who can help them craft exactly, you know, what they're thinking to translate that into a hundred words. Yeah. Maybe they have someone nearby who can yeah. do that for them. I, I would, I would hold it against them though if they couldn't write a hundred <laughs> words. Really, I mean, they, they got to articulate their position. If they can't articulate right. their position, then I'm not going to vote for them. I have to know what they're thinking. Right. No, I think it is important. Like I said, it doesn't even have to, even if it's not them as individual 
individuals. Hopefully they have someone on their team who is able to articulate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So interesting. So, because yeah. cause, uh, what you know, you're talking about is a, a microcosm of all the rhetoric that goes on for months. You're putting it in one place. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I can't say this is the be-all, end-all. This covers all the different policy well, positions. Exactly. There's so much There's information out there. It might be, um, actually. But we just put, like, it's a place where people can go and maybe have a little fun, learn about their candidates a little bit. And it's something, right? I think a lot of people look at their ballots and vote by whose name sounds better or maybe shares an ethnicity with them or, you know, that person that they saw sign waving. You know, so we say go beyond the shaka. Like, there has to be more to electing somebody than <laughs> the fact that they stood in the rain <laughs> waving a sign. And Going beyond the shaka. <laughs> yes. Have we had enough of that? <laughs> what was his name? Um, Gene, it'll come back to me. There was one politician who, who did the thing with the shaka. Yeah. And uh, or, uh, the sign holding, mm -hmm. uh, it'll come back to me, and um, uh, I'll, I'll think of his name. <laughs> but, but this caught on like wildfire, and before you know, everybody's standing on the street, and it's yeah. meaningless. <laughs> It doesn't mean anything. Well, unfortunately, the number one reason why people vote for a candidate is name recognition. And so it actually yeah. is not meaningless. That is how to get voted for. Is be is, like, oh, yeah, it? I remember that person's name. I saw them sure. in my, the corner. I see him with 27 people standing around him holding the, the signs. Uh, you know, then, then you think he's got a lot of support. And I heard from a candidate that they actually like standing out in the rain and they actually tell volunteers, don't come with me. I look particularly pitiful and I'll get a pity vote. Right, the pity <laughs> vote. I love it. <laughs> okay, well, this so is bad. not the pity vote. This is yeah. the intellectual now. <laughs> yeah. uh, and when we come back from this break, uh, we're going to go through exactly how you play it, which is very interesting right. and will be provocative for everyone who is going to vote and helpful. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham here with Think Tech Hawaii, and I invite you to watch my show, The Economy and You, each Wednesday at 3 o'clock um, here in Hawaii on OC16. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, host of Sustainable Hawaii. We live stream every Tuesday from noon to 1230. And you get a chance to hear what people are doing about sustainability in Hawaii and what the issues are impacting all of us in all the islands. Join us, please. Please join us at Think Tech Hawaii. My program is Asia in Review. And my next program is on November 17, Thursday, 11 a.m. This is Johnson Choi, your host. Aloha, everyone. I hope you've been watching Think Tech Hawaii. But I'm here to invite you to watch me on Viva Hawaii every Monday at 3 p.m. I'm waiting for you. Mahalo. Okay, we're back, we're live, we're in, we're in election season, it's so important that people vote, and as, uh, you know, Nicole said at the outset, um, or somebody else said it, maybe not you, we don't want stupid votes. You said that, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, I'll say it. We don't, we don't want stupid votes. If you're going to vote, vote smart. Be vote educated. You know, don't, don't just throw it on the wall, or for that matter, go on name recognition. Try, try to understand what they're saying, what they're going to do in office, how they can help in our community, how they how they can be sustainable and make us sustainable. That's what it's all about. That's yeah. what you care about, and certainly that's what we care about. So this helps you be smart in your voting. So let's take a whack at it. So we're going to get on the machine now. Nicole is going to run this for us. All right. So all right? if you go to hawaiicandidates.info, mm. um, you can find the website, or just go to kanuhawaii.org and go to the very top. Um, and so then uh, here we're just going to start with an example. So this is the list of races. And so District 13, if you happen to be in District 13 for the State Senate, um, then you click this button here that says Start Candidate Game. So all three of the candidates have responded to the survey. That's great. You can see here in red. And we'll start the game. Okay, wow. Okay. This is, happens to be my district. So and so I'm here we have the, the three responses. It says, What is the most pressing issue facing your district? What will you do to address it? And then there's the three answers. And you don't know who said what, and we randomize their location every time. Um, and you can see the extended answer can just I by vote? clicking on that. Would you mind if I vote? Okay, so this one's okay. <clears throat> lack so go, of communication. I, I take the one on the right. Okay, you like the high like cost the, of housing. I like the high cost of housing, that's, yeah. Okay, all right. So we just click, I like this answer best. And then it moves on to question two. Okay. Um, what would you do to improve Hawaii's public education system? And I think this is at random, so I can't tell left or right. Correct. So it's not the answer from the candidate is not going to be in the same location. So it's really just choosing which response you like the best. 
Why are there, oh, because there are three of them, so you have three separate Yeah, races. in this particular race, there are three candidates. And this is, um, I believe, Susan Chan Oakland, Suzanne Chan Oakland's um, vacated seat, and so this is a highly contested race. Okay, I'll take the one at the bottom right. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't There's be a lot of these. against my own Should we just kind of here, zoom, through, zoom through the rest? Yeah, what should the state legislature of free public account? Or <laughs> you say? actually want to play this. <laughs> I do. Let me see what they have to say. Yeah, so um, what should the state legislature do to improve police accountability? For this particular question, we asked um, folks at a tabling event to put pennies in a jar, their pennies for their thoughts, which question they wanted to be asked. And this one was pretty popular. People wanted the answer to this question, and so we made sure to ask it. Let's just look at it. So some of these questions um, were, <laughs> okay. they, the public helped us come up with these questions. Okay, I'll take the one at the bottom right. All right. That's my favorite geography, I think. I like this answer. Okay. All right. Um, so we have five questions to go. Do we want to speed this up or do we want to just keep going? I know keep, you're very going, excited to going. actually play do it. This. All right, all right. What do you think is government's biggest barrier to serving the most people? And what is one specific policy that will help change that? There's one candidate that looks like he or she likes the caps lock. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take the one at the bottom right. All right. I don't like caps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're waiting. This is great. Yeah. Because they're so, different. They're not the same, you know? Correct. Yeah, the answers are all pretty different from each other. Yeah, so we have a little bit of a stall. Oh, looks like we lost internet connection. Okay. You're going right. to have to go well, back and play later. Okay. But hopefully that gives people an idea of how to play. So you just get to see the answers. They're limited to, like I said, 100 words. And you just choose, um, I like this answer best, and then move on. And then when you get to the multiple choice questions, um, in this particular race, since there's three candidates, if two candidates have the same answer, then you can just skip that question. Yeah. And it'll skip it for you because it's hard to weigh that. Yeah. So at the end, it's going to come up with a percentage. And it's going to, at the end of the game... I don't know if it has a percentage, but it tells you who you agree with the most, but then it shows you the side-by-side. -side. So you can go back and review um, which, what the, the answers were and which ones you selected. Can you change your selections? Well, I mean, you can do it mentally, yeah. I mean, or you okay. can play it again. But yeah. it will show I'll you which one again. you chose. And you, as you reread it, you might think, oh, I do like that answer better. Um, but it's nice that it shows you your initial reaction. Because it's like, well, you initially thought you liked this answer. So it kind of questions you. Like, are you just changing it now because you want to vote for this person? Ooh. Or do you actually... I mean, it forces you to be me. introspective yeah. about your own thinking. Yeah. And I've heard from many people that they're very surprised um, that they ended up switching party lines or they just found a candidate that they were not expecting to agree with. Yeah. Um, so I think we sort of have these biases in our heads already. Ooh, yeah. And this game just takes those away. And you just have to go based on purely what they say. And it's uh, non -partisan. Partisan. So you you, yeah. you never know if you're voting Republican <laughs> or Democrat or what. Yeah. I mean, not that we yourself. have a lot of Republicans in the state of Hawaii. Well, I mean, there's certainly enough in the general. And so, I mean, maybe if enough people played this game, that could change. We realize yeah. that we actually do agree with the Republican candidates, and we could have more of a two-party system in a one-party dominated state, which would be good for democracy. Well, you know, the thing that strikes me, I mentioned it to you before we started the show, is that this, this is an automated voting machine in a way so I don't have to know that it's Dokes versus Roe I just I can just vote for positions mm -hmm. and if I and then it'll automatically cast theoretically you could do this it'll automatically cast my ballot for me for the person <laughs> who agrees who I, I agree with that person <laughs> and it's sort of an anonymous vote is what right I mean. well as the person who came up with the questions for this game I feel like that's a lot of pressure on me to come up with just the right <laughs> questions where I feel like this can determine your vote like I said I see this more as an entry point of a place where people can just at least develop a curiosity sure. and understanding about their candidates and that, you know some ability to learn more for some it might just be the end and I think it's still better than just name recognition or party oh, absolutely. Um, but I don't I think people vote for a lot of different reasons yeah. we want to make sure that they explore those well, you came up with the questions then. What yeah, were, what were my, your my team. Parameters? It, was, it was not me by myself. Okay. So we um, we had some public input for what the public thought we should ask. Um, we went door to door and asked people what they were concerned about. We asked um, a professor who works with millennials about you know what she thinks her students would be interested in. So we, we wanted to kind of 
rope in that group of people also, make sure that their concerns were being addressed because we felt like so maybe the selection didn't, didn't feel relevant. So you didn't just sit there in a closed room and write these questions Correct, out. yeah. I mean, there was a combination. There was some of us, you know, just like a group think, and then there was also looking out into the community and asking people what they wanted to learn. Um, for the OHA question, they asked um, people who are important to the Hawaiian community to come up with those three questions. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it strikes me that most people, I mean, most people, when they go into the ballot box and in into the election place or send in their, mm -hmm. their mail ballot, um, they could not articulate exactly what their cho chosen candidate stands for. Um, it, it is largely, you saw them on the street or holding a sign or name recognition or cousin's uncle's aunt kind of thing. Right. Um, the, they could not tell you. And so this changes the whole focus, really, for anybody who plays the game of just name recognition versus let's, let's see what this person is saying. And that's the yeah. best metric you have about what this person will do. You know, yes. I mean, I, it can't yeah. be perfect because we know that politicians make a statement and then they forget about the statement as soon as they're elected. Right. But, you know, you, know, you, can't, you, can't, you, you can't metric that. Right, but this allows for the, at least more accountability because if enough people say, well, I elected them because of their position on this, then they know why they were elected. And people can hold them accountable and said, well, this is why I elected you and you didn't do that. Yeah. You know, and so hopefully by informing the electorate, have people make educated and informed decisions and base their vote on that, then we can hopefully add more accountability to the entire process. Now, really, that's what we've got to have. We've got to have smarter elections because I think people have lost, this goes to your point before about why are they not voting. Um, people have lost confidence in the system, whether it's the cycle or maybe the rhetoric or the, uh, the PR that is thrown at us, you know, all those messages over and over and over again, and we don't believe it anymore. Yeah. And we, we don't believe anything we see anymore, even if it's on, even if it's on social media, which is, you know, for some <laughs> people more, you know, <laughs> even if it's on, <laughs> but, yeah. you know, and so we're turned off because we don't believe the politicians, we don't believe the messages. Uh, we, we keep hearing that the government is failing this way or that. Right. We see the government is distanced from ourselves. The whole process, it's not ours, it's somebody else's. Right. And so we just turn our backs on it. This is very unhealthy for the Constitution. It is, and yeah, for our community, for democracy. And so, like I said, we're just trying to find some way, some fun way to bring people back. And that's why we try not to make it too serious, because I think it's, yeah, the rhetoric and the policy is just all overwhelming. And so we just try to lighten it with some fun questions and a little gamification. And so hopefully... It's a good starting point for people. So what HawaiiCandidates.info. Is it being done elsewhere? I mean, did, did you get did you guys design this right here at home? or did We it, did. We did. Um, by we, I mean Olin. I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> well, you promoted no, I mean, it anyway. Yeah, at least this iteration <laughs> I helped with. Um, but, yeah, no, it was Kanu Hawaii that came up with this concept. Uh, I mean, there are other games that are done nationally. It's another reason we didn't do the presidential race. There are tools out there. Um, if you're still an undecided <laughs> voter and you want to know what policies our presidential candidates stand for, um, you can take a if similar, you you can play a similar <laughs> game. But we've talked to um, other people who do similar work around the, the country, other organizations. Darcy just came from a conference, um, and they're very interested in this game. So I think it is something that could be nationalized. We would love to see other states do something like this to have informed voters across the country where they're choosing on things besides yeah, name recognition or party lines. Yeah, I think you're at the front end, actually. I mean, I know there are other people working on the same thing, but um, you're at the front end, and maybe, you know, this is only the beginning of this kind of thing. For okay. example, it occurs to me that, <clears throat> so you have this, people can see the positions, now somebody wins, and it's six months later, and you match the positions against the voting record, and somebody, you know, so I'm curious now, I voted, and at the end of my voting, I signed up to be advised about, you know, accountability and whether this candidate did what his position was. Yeah, we stated. would love to include an accountability piece, definitely, yeah. um, to have exactly that candidate say this is what they stand for and then try to find a way to demonstrate is that what they in fact stood for when they were um, elected and then let the, the voters know this is what happened. 
And we worked on creating something similar to that. We found it was, it's pretty complicated and I think you need like a few staff people devoted to that who can really follow the legislature and um, the way that bills can change from supporting something to opposing something based on the amendments. Uh, it ends up getting pretty dicey. But um, so I, like I said, I think you need some full-time staff people devoted to, to, to that to, to make, make sure it's careful, really fair. Yeah, yeah, exactly, so to make that analysis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, I just I wonder, um, did you get demographics on the people? I mean, when I sign up, when I come and play the game, are you knowing anything about me? Do you ask my, my name, whether I'm a millennial, um, my neighborhood? No. No, I mean, well, we see what district you play the game in, and so that helps us see at least geographically. Um, and But more than that, no, we don't ask people's names. It's not so much about that. We just want people to play. But you could. You could, you could say. I suppose we could. J yeah, if people wanted, to, like if we wanted to have a, the accountability piece, people yeah, could offer yeah. their email address and we would tell them, we would get back to them. Um, so hopefully down the road, that's maybe something we could include. Well, I think this is very positive. I think it's positive not only for what it does right now today, and I think you'll have a lot of, hope you'll have a lot of action going forward, but what it could do in terms of accountability, you know, when, when you get, you know, real traction on this whole kind of internet engagement thing, it's a really wonderful idea. But, you know, one thing that strikes me, and I'd like to ask you about mm -hmm. it, you know, is that we don't have enough people who are running for office. And some of these, uh, I mean, how do you deal in this game with um, an office that's uncontested? And there are quite a few of them. Uh, um, how do you deal with that? And how do you deal with people who play the game but who would never, ever run for office? How do you encourage them? I mean, in all good cheer and with, you know, good nature <laughs> and maybe a joke or two. How do you encourage them to get into the system in Hawaii where everybody knows that politics is a blood sport? How do right. you get them into it? Um, we never really thought about that. I kind of like that idea of like maybe there's a button that says I could come up with a better answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. And so if you have enough of those, we'll be like, do you want to run? <laughs> I mean, it's the only way I could see how this game could translate into to getting people to run for office. But I mean, that's something that... Kanu has worked on in the past is how do we encourage people, how do we develop leadership, how do we let people know that it's really not that hard and we need more good people out there running for office. Yeah, this got to be a, a, a grooming game. You know, they, yeah. they have all these things, they, 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 you hire consultants and <laughs> managers and coaches to be a candidate and they go out and they find money for you and they tell you what to say, they tell you how to comb your hair, all that stuff. But there could be, a, maybe there is, a website which says, here's the way you do it. You know, well, you read this. Everybody read the same thing. You're all on the same page. And now you will have the advantage of this, of this baseline uh, of information that help you to help you do it. And you'll, you'll minimize your risk. You'll maximize your chances. Just follow our little rules. Yeah. Um, that would be a real public service, that one, too, no? Yeah, and I think there, there are groups who do that type of stuff. Quiliana Academy is also, mm -hmm. like, sort of that grooming. Like, they um, provide information on how to run for office. Um, but I think also another good place to start is neighborhood board meetings. I think people just in general should attend those and um, see how they're run, see the issues that they talk about. A lot of times candidates will come and legislators will come to those meetings. And so it's a good place to meet people and just kind of get a sense of the landscape locally about the stuff that most likely people care about the most yeah. is just in their neighborhood. Local. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then from there, kind of spreading their wings to see. Spreading their wings means run for office. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of uh, elected officials in this state come from the neighborhood boards. System, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think they do. Yeah, well, I think it's a very interesting idea, and we just leave it here okay. to say that you could have another column <laughs> in this game. I could come up with a better and, answer. And, and same questions. <laughs> How would you answer this question? And then you could, um, gee, or just uh, the idea that yeah, if you're convinced you could do better, then yeah, you just, run for office. Yeah, <laughs> at the end it says you should run for office. <laughs> Here's the number to call, <laughs> Office of Elections. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Thanks so much for Great having me. Great to see you. Great to have this come. It's wonderful that you're doing this. Thank you. Oh.